before we get started here, we want to give a big shout out to our friends over at Omni Labs. These guys have this really cool robot that you could do uh, telecommunications, have a telepresence. Now, what exactly is telepresence? It's literally being there and not being there at the same time. You could remote into a remote into a robot. <laughs> and with that robot, you could pretty much control it with any device, any kind of cell phone, tablet, computer. You can move it around the office. You can move it around your grandma's house, your parents' house. There's so many things that you can do with this robot. Make sure you guys do check out Omni Labs Robotics. These guys have a very, very cool way of having a telepresence without being physically there. And with today's world, the way we're heading, you just never know. And stuff like this can be very, very nice to have. So make sure you guys do check the description below for those links and get hooked up. And also our friends over at Buzz TV have been making waves in the streaming community last year and they're continuing to take it to a next level this year. They have some really interesting devices that we talked about on our Beyond the Streams interview with them. So if you missed that, make sure you check it out. And in the description below, there's going to be coupon codes so that you guys will continue to get the best deals from Buzz TV. So make sure you check that in the description below. And also FCD Box. If you guys have not heard of these guys, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of Wolf Launchers. You guys have heard of all these different uh, launchers that you could add to your Amazon Fire devices. These guys have their own exclusive launcher that you could add to your stuff, which takes care of so many good things and just make it very, very accessible just at the touch of your hands. Make sure you guys do go to fcdbox.com or check the description below to see how you guys can get hooked up with the latest and greatest launcher. Listen, guys, we've talked about security so many times and all the different things that we've done. You don't want to be entering password as your password. You don't want to be browsing the internet without some form of protection. So if you are going to be browsing the internet like everybody is, make sure that you buck up, you have some protection. Uh, we got some fantastic deals in the description below. We always try to make sure that we find the best deals for you guys. So there's a lot of interesting stuff coming out with VPNs now, uh, things that are including, you know, things like storage and all these other things that may be beneficial to you as well. Again, if you're looking for the best possible deals, the links are all in the description below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and please leave us a comment below or leave us a review depending on what platform you are. And with all that being said, let's start the show. Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Streams. Man, we got some we got some really really good uh, information here for you guys today. Um, next level, how are you doing up in the north? Are you guys snowed in yet? No, it's actually it hasn't been too bad. The snow's kind of been coming and going. It's melting a little bit today. Um, it's kind of like uh, snow fight weather. So if you want to, to throw around some snowballs outside, <laughs> some good packing snow. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um i want to introduce patrick how are you doing patrick i'm doing well really great here in boston today awesome and i know you were saying earlier that you're getting a little bit of snow right a little bit we had a storm a couple about a week or so that uh left a pretty heavy amount but it's pretty much thawed and we're ready for the next one now nice <laughs> yeah um so I wanted to wanted to give you an opportunity to really uh, introduce yourself. So um, if this is the first time anybody that's listening, um, they can they can know who you are and what you do and which company you represent. Yep, I'm Patrick Curley, and I run the product development at uh, DaySmart uh, Software, and we're headquartered in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And I have a development pretty good development team there, and also a development team in Raleigh, North Carolina. And we just started up uh, a Serbian development organization, too, to get some nice. more short capability. So it's pretty exciting. Awesome. Now, uh, your name of the, the name of the company is uh, Daysmart, right? Yep, Daysmart. We've been around a little over 20 years, and we build um, software for small to 
medium businesses, micro businesses. Um, and we basically built, uh, built things that are purpose built uh, around salon, uh, barbershops, nails. Uh, second vertical is around pet services, so grooming, boarding, doggy daycare would be in that category. Uh, then we have uh, day spas uh, that we specialize in and also tattoo and uh, body jewelry. Uh, so we, we found it actually it, it, it's very helpful for people to have a, a, an application that's really built for them. Uh, so as part of that, we actually hire guys uh, and gals that are from those industries to work with us. So we understand kind of the nuances of kind of what it takes to run a business successfully like that. So there's a lot of pieces of that that kind of make it into the software. You know, um, it sounds like you're really focusing to help the entrepreneur. What was like your epiphany moment 20 years ago that you said these these people or these industries need help with a certain thing? What was it that really got Day Start Day Smart started? It was actually uh, very similar to what you were just saying. A lot of it is just working with people. Um, you know, the founders of the company actually worked. Uh, at one of the motor companies in Detroit. And one of their friends um, basically was in uh, a hair salon and was you know, uh, complaining about the fact there really wasn't any software to kind of help them uh, with their business. So it was like, hey, you know, we could build something. So they started building it. That person actually used the software, really liked it. They told some friends, they told some friends, and the next thing you know, a company was born. So the company was really bootstrapped. You know, we were talking before we started about you know, micro uh, companies with a couple people. Um, a lot of people hired right out of college uh, to basically bootstrap the company. Um, basically, the company was built with uh, no outside money. It was really, a, you know, uh, sort of a grassroots type of development. And then we segued that into other verticals around, you know, pet services and right. uh, spas and uh, tattoo parlors because we saw some common themeology, uh, themeology mm -hmm. there with the tech that we were able to leverage that. So we really serviced those off of them. So we talked to about um, making it sort of a generic application, but you know, uh, our customers like the fact that we you know really target them specifically, and you know, there's functionality in the software that's really purpose built around you know their sort of day, you know the challenges that they have. So mm -hmm. an example of that is um, in hair salons, it's not that uncommon for them to do something you know for a customer and then have sort of a, a processing time. Well, that's really unproductive space unless it's able to be scheduled. So we allowed a, a, a sort of a, a space in there on you know certain types of services so they can actually book something else, you know, fairly small, you know, into that same, you know, location in the space. So there's a lot of, you know, nuances around, you know, how those things work. You know, compensation is another one. They're really, you know, creative about how they comp the hairstylists and how they build something for incentivizing them, uh, recognizing different skill levels. Yeah. Uh, there's also, you know, some people that can really do things really fast, other people that can't do things very fast. So how do you accommodate the fact that you're scheduling a dog for, you know, grooming with a slow groomer versus yep. experienced fast groomer? So there's a lot of intricacies in this that aren't obvious at face value that, you know, once you, you know, spend some time kind of in the business, you kind of know and you can build, you know, things around it. It's, it's really interesting because before I became a content creator, um, my closest family member, my cousin, uh, ran one of the largest um, eyelash salons in mm -hmm. the area where I live, right? So I spent a lot of time um, helping her develop her business and understanding the business, right? So when you say things like um, compensation, it does vary from the person's experience. So when she would have, you know, they would call them latistas, whatever, the lash artists, <laughs> depending on their experience, they would have different compensation rates. So when she was doing that, I ran an in-home doggy daycare and boarding business. So those two businesses, even though they're both entrepreneur styles, were run very differently. You can have somebody that's coming in for, you know, lash, they could be doing something with their hair, they could be doing something with makeup. Um, she also did permanent makeup stuff. So there's so many different products that you could schedule people for. And then right. on my side, it was like, we had doggy daycare. We had doggy boarding. Um, right. Some dogs came once a week. Some dogs came once a year. It was like, how do you schedule all the th those things? How do you manage it? And when you really start searching or when I would start searching for, um, I would call it a CRM because before that, I also ran what was called a BDC, which is a business development center where right. we use CRMs because it sounds very similar, um, the software that you're creating to a CRM, a customer management tool, right? Right. Um, 
how do you start looking specifically for CRM software for a doggy daycare or a boarding business? Where do you start, right? So I think it's really smart to focus on those niches. And um, it, it, it does, it does. I, I think what you guys are doing is much needed in all of the entrepreneur business. When I first started looking at your stuff, I was like, I'm sure there's something in here for content creators. There has to be. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> if basically the, the commonality or the theme that's kind of a, a, against um, our software is if it's in a, a sort of a brick and mortar, you know, type of establishment, you meet with customers, you have a repeat business, you know, those are, you know, sort of markets we could, you know, theoretically take the software in and uh, verticalize it, you know, but, you know, the, if you looked at the software that basically we have branding, that's very distinct, we market there, you know, one of the things you uh, talked about is the nomenclature, the terminology, the language, all that stuff is really important, you know, because it, it makes it easy for them to communicate. And a lot of times the employees, you know, you mentioned a lot of different services that you might have. Well, a new employee may only be able to do two or three of those. So how do you deal with the fact that, okay, someone's looking for an appointment, they've asked for these three services. How do I figure out which employee is actually eligible to be booked? Right. So there's lots of intricacies to this. And, you know, when I first uh, sort of came to the company, you know, I thought, oh, it's a relatively straightforward application. But as you start to delve into how complicated some of these businesses are and how appreciative they are, the fact that you know that and you're actually building something that they can, you know, kind of deal with. Can, can you just elaborate a little bit more? Was my analogy of your software like a CRM or what kind of similarities does Daystar, Daysmart, I keep calling it Daystar, I don't know why, I apologize. <laughs> Daysmart have between a CRM and what you guys are doing? Yeah, it's actually interesting you bring that up because most people, when they start looking for their software, they're looking for a scheduling tool and something to help them with their employees. And what they right away figure out is that we help them establish a digital presence, you know, a website. A lot of their customers want to actually book online. So they mm -hmm. use a, an online portal for that. They want availability of that. They want to see what services there are. Um, th but in addition to that, COVID was a, where this kind of brought this really to a head. You know, almost all of our customers were shut down, at least temporarily nationwide. And um, what they found is our software and the fact that they were on it allowed them to keep in contact, to stay relevant with their customers. You know, so their ability to communicate with them while the shop was actually closed was instrumental in kind of maintaining, you know, sort of their business continuity. So, you know, we had also built uh, some templates or some communications for them. You know, it's like, oh, we're closed, but, you know, we have a reopening or if there's stuff that they could do online, uh, like hair color touch ups um, mm -hmm. you know, where you might have a specific formula. <clears throat> we allowed them basically to do that online and we communicated out to their customer base you know, while they were actually, the shop was closed. So they could end up, you know, sort of picking up an at-home kit. Uh, we also built a, um, uh, a teleconsulting uh, widget that we put into the software. So you and I could actually see each other because obviously in, you know, sort of beauty treatments or things that are kind of going on, actually seeing kind of what's going on is really important part of that. Sure. Or if you bought one of the at-home kits, you know, and things were kind of going a little right, you might want to talk to me about, you know, what to do with this, <laughs> you know, what's just happened. You know, so there's a lot of things around uh, the relationship and fostering that, um, which in COVID became essential to kind of keep them all in place. But in sort of day to day operations, that communication with the customer, uh, allowing them to, um, you know, schedule and you know have appointments with me. But more importantly, market to them with some context. Like if you come every you know month and a half. And you always do the same things. And I have three other things that you might be interested in. I can actually devise a marketing program, you know, with the software to actually outreach to them to say, hey, you might also be interested in these two things or give them a marketing special around that. You know, so all those things became really important to build revenue around the uh, customers that they had and also communicate and have customer retention. You know, so there's a lot of things around CRM that actually were built in the software, which before software like ours, was out of the reach of micro businesses. Mm -hmm. If you're a one or two person shop, you don't have a marketing department. You don't have an IT person. You know, so mm -hmm. putting all that power kind of in the reach of a you know an individual or two or three people running a shop was really you know kind of where the aha kind of moment came from. It's like wow, we we can really build something powerful here. Yeah. 
So I want to keep I, I want to keep it really simple because my my brain's going super geek mode right now. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, I'm already thinking about relational databases and like everything in the back. Yeah, end and, <laughs> yeah so I'm I'm already I'm already like oh man I want to I want to dive deep into that. Um, so keeping it simple though, um, let's just say I I own a barbershop, and you spoke on a really good topic about covid and how it's changed like it's changed how small businesses run their businesses now um so i own a barbershop i have zero knowledge of websites i have zero knowledge of databases zero knowledge of like literally it's like hey here's my phone call me and i'll schedule the appointment i'll write it down on a sticky note somewhere um so for somebody who has zero experience of any any of this, how do I start? How do I set it up? That's great. You are talking exactly about our customer. Most of them consider themselves artists or you know creative types. So they you know have very little experience with technology and they're in some ways intimidated by it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one of the big challenges I had when I first came to the company is we had a ton of functionality. I mean, I've rattled off quite a bit, you know, that we have, and we were throwing that all at, you know, the initial sort of customer and they were kind of overwhelmed. So what we did is actually we built um, sort of a tiered, you know, sort of approach to that. So if you're a one person shop, you know, what are the things that you kind of need? You know, you want to get paid, you want to, you know, keep your contacts, uh, you want to have, you know, um, your contacts of your employees, uh, actually, you probably don't have employees, so you basically just have one person. So people want to make appointments. You probably have a one web- website. So that's kind of basic stuff. So you don't need all the marketing and all the employees and all that, you know, things that kind of go along with it. And then the other thing that we did is we have a, a native um, application that we built for both iOS and Android phones. And we have a large amount of our customers who don't want to have a computer don't want a screen in their shop and want to carry around their business in their hand. You know, so giving them the ability to have uh, for people to make appointments with them, to respond to them, um, basically bill them and get paid. You know, those are kind of basic sort of core functionality uh, that we have a fully functional kind of, you know, carry it around in your hand type of application. And as the businesses start to get a little bit more sophisticated, we built, you know, sort of a, an offer above that and then above that, uh, so you can actually grow with your business with the software to get more and more complex as kind of your needs change. Um, so, you know, to answer your question more directly, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty easy to get started. Uh, you basically start, you know, adding your customers in there. Uh, you set up a website. We have templates for that. You can actually just put you know, your logos in there, change some language around. We help you create a web presence. All of a sudden, you're on the net on the web. Um, so, you know, customers can start making appointments with you. Uh, so it's really pretty simple to get started. We actually have customers uh, typically up and running on the application in 10 minutes. You know, they can download it from the app stores and get going. And, you know, we let them trial it for a couple of weeks for free. And then as they start to go, um, then they switch over to sort of paid subscribers and off they go. Um, so as their needs kind of get more complex, then they sort of grow into the other you know, parts of the software. And we do things in the application to introduce them to that, too. You know, when they start getting close to checking customers out, we'll tell them that they can get, you know, integrated payment processing, you know, through a, a third party that we have to help them with uh, taking credit cards. You know, once you do that, you can put credit cards on file. Once you do that, you can collect deposits. You know, you can set up uh, memberships where you can get things to happen sort of on a recurring basis. So the complexity expands as your kind of depth and understanding of the application gets, you know, larger. Uh, so it was really uh, purposefully, you know, sort of created so that the things you get exposed to when you first get in, when you're just one person starting a business, uh, that you can get, you know, started and not get overwhelmed with, you know, all the vastness of kind of what's, you know, there in front of you. So does that answer the question? Yeah, uh, I think you nailed a lot of stuff in there. I, I think the the other thing I was kind of thinking about um, as you were answering it was pretty much a lot of the heavy lifting has already been done, and yeah. they would just have to change a couple words, drop a couple images, and then That's if right. they need any help, they just reach out to you guys. That's right. We have uh, onshore tech support that you know people can reach out to. 
Um, we do onboarding support. Many of our customers don't use it, but if, if you do want it, you can actually get um, a live you know, tech to kind of walk through it. We have a lot of um, videos and support things on our website, uh, a lot of resources built out there. Uh, a lot of ways we do it is we look at uh, what our customers kind of call us about, and then we'll create you know, sort of offline resources for them to use. And one thing we figured out a long time ago is they don't really want to have constraints around how they learn things, you know, because a lot of times we want to do it right in the middle of the business day and they want to mm -hmm. do it, at, you know, Sunday night at 730, you know, yeah. while the baseball game's on. Yeah. Um, so being able to have them do it on demand and have it interrupted, all those things were really important part, you know, sort of the, of the you know, devising the solution. And one of the things I believe in is that it's the total experience. It's not just what's on the keyboard or the mouse. Uh, or your screen, it's, you know, how easy is it to buy, how easy is it to download, you know, how easy is it to, for you to use, are there resources for you, if you got a problem with billing, you know, how straightforward is that, so a lot of that stuff is kind of built, integrated in with the whole you know, back office of the company. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of these, I, I, I would assume a lot of these people or the individuals or businesses that you deal with are very hands-on, um, so when you, when they get started with uh, Day, uh, Daysmart, um, do you guys have account reps that manage like a certain amount of, uh, of reps that handle the onboarding process like you were saying there? Um, and and is, the, is, the, is the structure and the features that you guys offer, is it kind of modular? They kind of add the features that they need as they go and as they expand because it kind of sounds like they get to a point where you've helped them to an industry standard and then you're able to custom tune after that point because you guys do create the software on your end yourself. Right. Well, the answer to the question is, is yes on both parts. We have a couple ways that we sell. Uh, we have a, um, a sales force inside Salesforce and they basically talk with customers on a pre-sales kind of basis and they help them kind of understand which product is right for them. So as mentioned before, you know, we have sort of a tiered offering. So we have a basic kind of offering and that's really meant for, you know, one person kind of operation. It's just kind of getting going. Uh, a lot of times they would typically be running the business off their phone. And then we have sort of a deluxe package that's a step up from that. And we add, you know, like a half a dozen features to that. And then there's a premium package on top of that, which is kind of, you know, everything we have kind of, you know, that runs through it. So things like that would be automated marketing, you know, and being able to do reputation management, um, you know, connecting in with, you know, third party services to manage your reputation on Facebook or Yelp or things like that. So there's a lot of sophistication you can ultimately get to, but that's would be inappropriate for a sort of single person shop. And then, you know, post sales, when people become customers, we have tech support too, that they can call into, or they can do chat right from the application. You know, we have, um, you know, the ability for people to, to talk to a live rep rate in the application, you know, so they don't have to actually dial a, you know, a phone um, and get into some type of queue or something like that. So, again, it's usability and having access to people that can help you kind of right there in the moment. And we can look at their screens, too. We can actually see, you know, kind of what's happening and you know, where they are and replicate, you know, kind of the experience they're having so we can talk them through it. So there's quite a bit of... Um, you know, customer success, you know, we really want customers to be productive with the application and, you know, not try it and get frustrated and give up. Uh, we, we actually have a dedicated uh, user experience team uh, as well. Um, I was able to, you know, get um, one of the uh, professors actually in the user digital experience program to actually come work for Daysmart and she leads our user experience uh, development. And we work on, you know, developing the flow. Um, and she taught me something, uh, really great. It's, it's not so important for us to design it the way we think it ought to work. It's to design it so it works the way they think it ought to work. Right. And sometimes that's multifaceted. You know, it depends on, you know, the, the customer as to how they expect it to work. So we did a lot of, you know, studies on trying to understand where things kind of go off the rails. You know, when do they abandon things? And then we engineer around, you know, that particular kind of characteristic to make it easier to digest, easier to understand and figure out how, you know, it should work and develop it that way. It's something that's, it sounds easier than it actually is because a lot of times <laughs> people ask questions, but they usually ask the wrong questions. They know what they want, they just don't know how to get there. So you guys are trying to get them to their end goal and trying to help them along the way, but a lot of times they don't know how to verbalize that to you guys. What's that's kind right. of your, your process when you're trying to figure out 
what is it ideally that's uniquely beneficial for that one customer and how to take them to that next level that they're trying to get to. Yeah, it's actually, we do a lot of work with customers directly, uh, myself included, uh, where we'll talk to customers about what they say they kind of wanted to do. And then we'll talk them through it, you know, to kind of understand kind of what the uh, artifacts of that are. So, you know, we kind of walk them through some of the problem cases. And by doing that, we can generally get a better understanding of what to develop. Uh, so we do a lot of uh, sort of customer outreach with surveys, um, we just did one recently to kind of understand, you know, why the usage of a particular characteristic wasn't as high as we kind of thought it would be. Uh, and by doing that, we get a lot of customer feedback. That's actually one of the other pieces of the puzzle. You know, we we try really hard not to develop, you know, custom software for particular customers, which is difficult because, you know, we're really servicing thousands, tens of thousands of customers. So we really need to understand kind of how to actually reach, you know, the bulk of them without making it overly complicated. You know, so, you know, by us building, you know, something that works kind of the same way for, you know, a multitude of people uh, and does that successfully, that's, you know, a lot more difficult than, you know, building a kind of purpose built exactly the way, you know, somebody would like it to work. You know, so there's a lot of, you know, um, sort of crowd understanding or mob understanding and kind of looking at things in aggregate as opposed to sort of specific pieces. And you know, we use a lot of tools to kind of collect that information. We actually talk to our tech support people quite a bit too, to kind of understand, you know, what they're getting questions about and, you know, roadblocks that they have and use that as sort of input into, you know, how to redevelop or re-engineer. We do a lot of refactoring too. You know, we do a lot of iterative development, you know, we'll, we'll put something out, you know, see customer feedback and then we'll refine it and do it some more. Uh, we get a lot of feedback from customers about what they'd like it to do that it didn't do initially. And we'll integrate that into the, you know, product on the next iteration. So it's pretty fulfilling to see, you know, products sort of grow up, you know, where you start out with something uh, and then you get, you know, a lot of information from sort of the usage model you know, from the customer base and uh, collecting information from sales and tech support. And we integrate that into, you know, my group and, you know, get it into the product. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Now I got a, so I got a two part question, two questions. Sure. Um, so the first one is this is now here's my geek side coming out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the first part is um, for the back end for the the database are you are you guys storing everything within uh sql or what is it sql yeah okay um so here's the second part now i'm so glad you guys said yes <laughs> um i love sql like uh like i use <clears throat> when i used to work at the hospitals um for the the county the state um a lot of the stuff that i was using was sql um just because it may, it may, for me, I think it was, it's the easiest one out of, you know, Oracle and all those other ones that are out there. Um, but let's just say you happen to land a customer that's a geek like me. And I'm just like, cool, this helps me create my, my scheduling. I could, I could look at my appointments. I could, I could see what my productivity is, the sales, um, I can connect with people. There's so many things I could do, but now I'm just like, okay, what if I want a custom style report yeah. and I want to, I, I, I guess it's almost like a double edge. Is there a way that if a report is, does not exist in the system, do you guys now create it? Or can you guys say like, Hey, we could actually give you access to create custom reports so you could like almost like drag and drop almost like a like a tableau i guess you know yeah, yeah you actually hit on you know probably the most common occurrence for you know people asking for a, you know, api access or database mm -hmm. access uh reports is you know probably the number one reason why they want it and we do support that you know usually it's our larger customers <clears throat> you know they have um kind of the wherewithal the to kind of you know get through that uh, gauntlet because it is a, a pretty big jump up from you know hitting a button and having the report kind of show up. Mm -hmm. uh, other customers that wouldn't be as technically savvy uh, to be able to do that will do um, reports, and we try to also coalesce that too. If we get you know ten requests for the same report, that you know sort of seems like a good one for us to build into the package. We have a really robust reporting package 
Um, so we do quite a bit of that. And that's one of the things that customers value kind of when they get downstream is they're really trying to run their business kind of at, at the heart of it. You know, so understanding it and talking with their bookkeeper and their accountant is important, but also trying to figure out, you know, what services and what employees are actually doing the best, which ones are selling the most products versus, you know, the services. So all those things are reports um, that kind of get generated. But, you know, we do have, the you know, some customers that get, you know, API access because they do things that are kind of beyond the scope of what we would, you know, sort of generate in the package, you know, proper. So we do have that capability. When you when you talk about building in special reports or features into a package, is this, um, so I'm just going to use this because it's on the top of my head, but like 123Pets is one of the um, softwares underneath DaySmart, right? right? So let's say you have two different groomers. Um, if one groomer is requesting a certain feature or product that's unique for their business and you guys go ahead and implement that, does that get implemented across all of 123Pets or is it only for that one unique groomer? We would release it across the entire um, product, uh, product line. We don't really do a lot of specials um, or on the side kind of branches. It makes the um, revision control really complicated. Right. Um, so we integrate everything back in. So if you were to you know, talk to us about developing something, we've actually declined, you know, if it's too special of a request um, because it wasn't sort of in the general interest of the, you know, our customer population as a whole. Um, but, you know, generally speaking, we would, you know, do that work and then integrate it back in and try to generalize it a bit. So uh, if it was really specific for you um, that we could make it useful for, you know, 60 plus percent of other customers that might right. want to use it as well. Right, right, right. Was there any um, any features in the last 20 years of creating this <laughs> entrepreneurial style software that kind of stands out like you never saw coming, but is actually really um, impactful into the businesses that you guys have been helping? My favorite is the marketing automation that we have. <clears throat> um, customer history is sort of a, um, a gold mine uh, for most of our customers, it's under under leveraged. You know, when they can really understand what all their customers kind of what their behavior is, uh, we developed a, an automation system for marketing so that they could sort of create um, filters. An example of that is, um, you know, you haven't been to the business in the last thirty days. You only come in for a haircut, um, and you know, he, these are the services that you actually usually pick. We can actually get a pick list generated from that. And we can actually set it up so that it ret return, runs, you know, sort of routinely, like every week or two weeks and generates a new unique pick list. So once you get the thing up and running, it will actually, you know, run, you know, pretty much indefinitely. You don't have to do any more work. Uh, so, you know, that was useful for, you know, stuff that's basic, like uh, happy birthday, you know, type of special, you know, you know, in your birthday month, we're going to give you a 20% off coupon. So, you know, that runs every couple of weeks. We figure out whose birthday is coming up. We send it out. Um, then the other thing we they do with it is they do things called uh, sort of capacity um, management, where if you know Tuesday afternoons and Thursday afternoons are slow, uh, we will let you sort of devise a, a program that will let you say, okay, if you book, you know, during those windows where I'm slow, you'll get, you know, 20% off. Um, so we were helping them kind of get better, you know, sort of efficiency. So the utilization of that marketing engine was really, you know, amazing. Uh, and it's would sort of be thought as out of reach of, you know, sort of customers of our level of sophistication, you know, so that was really where we, the satisfaction kind of came into it. We were putting that kind of power, you know, kind of within the reach of a few people, you know, kind of running a, a beauty salon. It was really pretty fulfilling to kind of see that come to fruition. Now, is that with, uh, like, are, are you saying that the system could send emails automatically to those customers? Yes, we have uh, the ability to send over email and text message. You know, you guys probably know this better than anybody. You know, people like to text. They don't like to be on the phone. Um, so the most effective method for our customers to reach their customers is through text message you know mm -hmm. so we have devised sort of templates for them to communicate you know with their customers over text you know the basic one that we started doing that with was appointment reminders one of the biggest frustrations for our customers is no shows because it's lost revenue it's dead time it's money directly out of my pocket and there's nothing they care about more about than that 
you know, so we built a, a feature allowing them to send uh, a reminder, which would, you know, send out a confirmation. If they don't confirm it, then that shows up on um, their display to, that they have to, you know, do another outreach to them to make sure that they get the appointment confirmed. And that sort of evolved and graduated. And now we support two-way texting. Oh, so if wow. I send you an appointment reminder and you go, shit, I've got, you know, an appointment with uh, Beyond the Streams tomorrow. I can't make that. You can reply and open up a text message and you can actually reschedule that appointment in real time, you know, with the salon. And that was like another, you know, big sort of breakthrough for them where they had that ability to communicate kind of in real time beyond, you know, just sort of broadcasting out uh, messages which are remain to them specifically. So it's, you know, it's pretty powerful. A hundred percent. Like I'm, I'm, you probably see my face, but I'm getting super excited hearing all these features because when I started in the business development field, um, it was a, a call center that I built from the ground up for um, actually several car, de car dealerships, right? And obviously no shows and yeah. are, are a big issue, right? So one of the biggest killers in, in any um, brick and mortar business is labor. Right. So everything was invested with labor hours. So we were calling, we were following up um, a, a day in a life really started with me sitting at my desk, looking at a program that looked like QBasic and punching in numbers, pulling out lists. And sometimes these lists were the same lists that were repetitive over and over. I was just changing a day frame. So just kind of touching on something you said a few moments ago where you're like, you could set up repetitive lists to be pulled consistently. One of my tasks done. Don't need to do it anymore. It comes to my inbox or wherever it is. It shows up on the software. I just hit print. We're good to go. You know what right. I mean? The next part was um, the two-way text, right? So we were constantly calling people saying, hey, you're due for an appointment. You're due for an appointment. And we're constantly calling people saying, you missed your appointment. Exactly. And that's paying somebody you know, an hourly wage to consistently do that, where that process, when we look at, at labor hours, has been replaced by a text message that's shot back and forth. Yeah. That, now, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like that person on the other end, the customer, is rescheduling it through an algorithm, through an actual program, because when they text back, it's going to go into the system. The system's going to automatically respond, hey, if you'd like to reschedule, what day would you like? Would you like this day or that day? And there's no more labor hours at that point. Is that correct? Not with the two-day texting, but we have a capability that's similar to that. We're on, you can go to the online booking portal and you can move it around that way. But the two-way texting, you're actually texting with a human and okay. you know, working with you uh, to do that. But it is a cool idea uh, mm -hmm. basically to feed that, you know, right in. Uh, but we'd have to actually give them, you know, the scheduling kind of thing so we could actually redirect them, you know, to reschedule their appointment. So it's okay. definitely doable. It, well, it'll, it'll be, it'll be another, another workflow that you kind of came really close to that I'll point out. How often when you run a shop does somebody call in sick? That happens all the time. Yep. Mm -hmm. But when it, that happens, you're sitting there and you got to book a business or a book of appointments for that particular person that you've now got to deal with. So we have the ability to kind of void all those out, send reminders out to all the customers, you know, saying, hey, sorry, you know, Cheryl's out today. You know, we're going to have to rebook you, you know, call the shop or open a text message stream with them to start the dialogue to actually redirect that. That's a monstrous time sink in the average shop. And it happens yeah. all the time. And you know, it'll so be it'll be cool just to just listening to what you guys were saying. It'll be cool if if if, if you know, you got a text message that said, hey, you know, uh, if your barber or groomer or whoever is not there, um, you could reschedule it. Um, and that, 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 that automation that he was talking about, it would be super cool if they were just like, yeah, you know what? Let me just reschedule it with somebody else and almost have it like a, like a code where it says, if you like to rescheduled, please text rescheduled where the system will automatically be like, boom, here's our calendar. And you, you pick whoever you want at whatever time that's available. So <laughs> we actually have a lot of that capability built into the online uh, booking where you say what, what it is you want, what day, when you want it and who do you want it to be with. Mm -hmm. uh, it will show you basically the availability of appointments so you can book all that. So the, the capability is all there. Uh, we haven't built it into this rescheduling thing that we were just talking about, but it's a pretty good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I might actually put that into the next release. <laughs> when I used to train my employees, 
this is this is how I would do it. I would say, okay, when you talk to your customers, you only give them two options. You say, okay, you have this day or this day available. All right, you pick this one. Well, I have mornings or afternoons. They would pick mornings or afternoons. I ha- if they picked afternoons, I have one o'clock or three o'clock. So, I mean, if if you work on kind of that kind of premise, then that could be worked into an algorithm pretty easy. We found that um, when you left the decision up to the customer, a lot of times talk time and a lot of time would be wasted or they wouldn't end up booking the appointment. So Yeah, you, you actually hit on a usability mm-hmm. issue, which is the more what I'll call is drag uh, that you put mm-hmm. into a process, the more likely they are to abandon it. So uh, that means fewer decisions, you know, fewer options. Uh, and keeping it simple. Um, and, you know, for our customers, it means fewer button clicks. You know, they don't yeah. really want to spend a lot of time going through screen after screen. So the the more you can do to kind of shape, you know, the path to be narrow and, and clean, mm-hmm. the better off you are. So there's a lot of work, you know, being done at Facebook to, you know, kind of make sure that the paths are, you know, well understood. So the things that you do all the time. Another one is uh, rebooking. Um, it's gold too, when you finish, you know, an appointment you get that customer to rebook, you know, so you don't want to make that like booking a new appointment because you already know who the person is. You already know who they saw. You already know why they were there. So let's fill all that stuff out and just, you know, put them to place it in there and we can make it easy to say, okay, one week out, two week out, three weeks out. So a lot of that stuff is put out on the checkout screen. So right there, you know, when you're trying to do that, your goal is to get them to rebook so you can, you know, firm in another, you know, revenue opportunity, you know, for that per- particular person. So all this stuff is sort of tied into understanding how the business kind of works on a day-to-day basis. And, you know, that's the point I was making early on where understanding the customer is a lot, um, you know, part of what uh, makes the thing special and unique. Now, do you see, so if I was the the barbershop or the groomer or whatever, is, is DaySmart pretty much everywhere I'm looking at when I'm interacting with a customer from the first time they call in to when they walk in to when they actually go to pay out. Um, how, how does that interface look in each one of those interactions when it comes to the, the business owner or their employee interacting with the actual customers themselves? Yeah, that's, uh, you're correct. It, it is day smart that handles kind of that whole thing. Uh, and sort of let's start at the beginning. You want us to you know, make an appointment. That could be the online booking portal, which is day smart. You know, then they show up, so then they need to get checked in. That could be a receptionist. Mm-hmm. The stylist that actually works with them comes over. You know, when they come over, they're looking at you know, Next Level's uh, history, and they say, oh, you were here six weeks ago. You got a haircut. I also happened to convince you to buy you know, two products, so I asked you about those. I made a note in your appointment that your son had a baseball game you know, and he was playing in the championship, so I'm going to ask you about that. I've also got some other customer notes about you know what you did on your last you know treatment, so I can use that to make sure I've got good context. I finished that up, you know, so now it's time to check out. You know, basically, I can take it myself, or you can walk up to the front desk. You can check out on your way out to the car. I can set it up so you get a text message to ask you, um, did you like your service? Rate is from one to five. And you, depending on what you answer there, I'll retarget you to you know write us a small review on Facebook or or Yelp. So all that's managed and delivered by DaySmart. You know that whole experience. Right. I'm super it's all, so it's all integrated. Okay. So okay, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to absorb a lot of this. This is, this is some great stuff here. What you're um, trying to do is figure out how it all works. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So okay, customer comes in. They they have the appointment with me. And I'll, I'll, I'll say I'm the barber. I'm cutting their hair. Um, they, you're saying that they could pay using the website, right? It'll have a payment integration already built in. Yes, you can. You can um, basically charge out or uh, rate it at the front desk with sort of traditional means. Or if I have a card on file for you, which is pretty common, if you have repeat business, I can actually, you know, get you to, you know, check right out and it will just charge, you know, right through you and I can email you a receipt or uh, print you one. So all that's, you know, basically done. We also have a contactless um, payment too. With COVID, especially, there's a lot of things, uh, happens in pet services all the time where you yeah. drop your animal off at rate at your car, or there's a, um, a, a port way that you kind of take your, your dog in or your dog's there when you pick up. So when you get in the car, there's actually, you know, an ability for you to say, hey, I'm, I'm here. You hit 
a button to let them know they come out and they grab your your pet and at the return you say i'm here to pick up and then when you're driving away you'll get actually the the invoice for it so there's no contact basically for the entire thing um so that so, can all happen um sort of seamlessly so what are the different um you know so so, so some people take different types of payments um if we're doing it all virtual you know is there any way to say hey you could either um pay by credit card you could pay using your paypal account you could pay using venmo zelle cash app or does it have integration with all the different payment services out there that anybody could pay with whatever they have no we don't have that broad of a range of uh, payment options but we do offer an integrated uh, integrated uh, payment for credit card um, and that's probably the predominant way and you get a ton of benefit you know, with uh, integrated payments, you know, once you get the like card on file, you can do all kinds of things, you know, going back to the um, no shows. I mean, deposits is a good way to uh, secure that. Um, memberships is another huge moneymaker for our customers, you know, cause you, know, you guys probably know a little bit. The statistics on that is um, memberships. A lot of times are given as gifts. People are real enthusiastic at the beginning. Then they get into the term of the membership. They don't use it as much. So it's free money. Um, so having integrated cre uh, credit card processing allows you to do all those things. And plus the reports obviously are more accurate, you know, cause we mm -hmm. can, you know, integrate in, you know, what tips are basically given, uh, who they're given to, we can split tips, you know, between employees. So all that basically, you know, is enabled, uh, with the credit card processing that's, um, integrated in with the software. And if somebody gives cash, they could notate, they could say, okay, cash was given, yeah. In full or whatever. And then they could say, here's your receipt, mail your receipt or something. Correct. Yeah. We can cool. still handle cash. You know, some amount of business obviously still done that way. Um, mm -hmm. Some of our verticals have different uh, characteristics around that too, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned memberships and my brain started working on, you know, how they have those uh, programs where if you buy like five of this, then you got one of these free. Is there some kind of um, member perks or, or options to kind of create um, a, a custom campaign like that in your software? Absolutely. Yeah, you can build basically a combination of product and services. And the whole idea of a membership is to give some type of bargain or a deal. Um, so if you bought them a la carte kind of as you went, you'd pay more. Um, so that's the whole enticement, you know, trying to get um, engaged in that. So you can construct it out of pretty much anything in your product and service inventory and we'll keep track of the redemptions so people don't, you know, over redeem. Uh, and also we'll recharge them, you know, as the interval kind of comes up and you can suspend them, you know, a lot of times, especially in vacation areas, um, or vacation time, like during August, they'll want to put the membership on hold. Uh, so we can allow you to do that. So all that stuff is, um, capable in the software. You know, um, I'm going to ask what I think is a pretty silly question because I've been on on both sides and I, I'm sure that you get this asked a lot of times, right, where where people come to you and they're like, well, this all sounds really great. But can I afford it? Because I already know that most companies, individuals, businesses, entrepreneurs are spending either more money or wasting more time with what they're doing currently versus um, what is it, the, the dollar per customer acquisitions that they could be saving um, when they're really managing their re referrals, their, their customers that are going to be coming back more on a frequent basis, and the ability to invest more time onto getting new customers through online marketing and campaigns as well. So if a customer has those conversations with you saying, I don't know how I can afford it, how does that conversation go on your end? It's pretty easy conversation, um, you know, because usually we can talk to them about, you know, the things that they care about, you know, just uh, eliminating no shows alone, you know, getting them to think about how many no shows they might typically have and say, well, that's, you know, sort of a basic part of the product, you know, making sure that you've got confirmed, you know, appointments, you don't have to, you know, have time on the phone. Um, and then, you know, when you start getting into being able to do, you know, marketing and, you know, getting a website, having digital presence, you know, you know, Growing their customer base is something they care about, uh, secondly, and holding on to customers is a big one. And getting more money out of each customer, each customer visit is a big one. So we usually pick through, you know, sort of those one at a time and kind of work them through it and say, okay, so, you know, this isn't, you know, worth the $30 a month 
to get started with the software. And, you know, as your needs grow and you see, you know, how, um, you know, your profitability as a business, your performance as a business grows, you can grow with the software too and move up to you know, sort of higher levels. Uh, so it is a pretty easy conversation. The product pretty much sells itself in many regards. We distribute through um, the app stores um, and we get a, a good amount of our business without, you know, actually doing, you know, some of that. So the, the product does kind of sell itself. Um, and the, the, the verticals we travel into are um, a lot of word of mouth and community type of businesses, you know, so they don't typically take, you know, expert testimonial or, you know, the recommendation list. They, they talk to their friend or uh, the shop that I worked at used this, you know, yeah. so referral and brand value is really important too. And, you know, DaySmart's been around Salon Iris, you know, sort of a brand in that in the salon space uh, for a long time, you know, pretty much everybody in the business knows us, you know, so that, you know, helps quite a bit too to uh, sort of sell the product on the brand. It's, it's very true when you're in an industry like the salon industry or the pet industry, you know a lot of people and they don't even need to be in the same country because when I was in the, um, um, the animal industry, I talked to a lot of other people that were in the business, not necessarily the same thing that I was doing, but across North America. And you, you would join groups and you're constantly bouncing ideas off each other. And um, do you see or do you guys currently have like a referral program where people do refer their friends or, or, or to groups that they're in um, that kind of helps with that marketing as well for your business? We haven't done too much um, on referrals, but, you know, we do participate in uh, trade shows pretty often. Yeah. And we try to find partners to work with as opposed to us doing it directly. Um, you know, sort of trusted names kind of in the industry. I don't know if, if you've been to a lot of these, but a lot of times there's, uh, you know, mini seminars or talks kind of given about a how to. And I've been to a few of them myself. Uh, and the people in the audience, typically, if they know who the person is or they're respected kind of in the industry, they are literally writing down everything they're saying. You know, so if you can get kind of recommendations kind of going that way, right. um, that that's a good kind of work word of mouth. So, you know, we have customers, you know, kind of of that stature uh, and like to kind of partner with them with some of the things that are kind of going on with trade shows. You know, plus, you know, YouTube videos, things like this obviously help, um, you know, with trying to get people who, you know, listen to you guys as a, an audience about, you know, tech and how it might be able to be made to work for me. A lot of our customers are first time you know, business owners are first time software buyers. So, you know, they, they had nothing before or pen and paper before. And, you know, so they're just trying to get in, kind of get their feet wet. So, you know, getting somebody to help them kind of, you know, get through the um, labyrinth as you will to kind of get started is, is a big piece of the puzzle. We've talked a lot about how you guys have really impacted the turnstile business, right? And when you guys are, when, when, when their customers are actually at their door or on the phone, but you mentioned, you know, during, during this last year for COVID, how you guys have really been impactful when it comes to online marketing, right? I just wanted to hear a little bit more about that and how you guys have helped um, businesses get a bigger online presence through social media when, when you're usually a business owner or an entrepreneur, you're one person with so many hats. You don't have time for the phone, the front door, um, Facebook, and you know all that kind of good stuff. What part have you guys really played on the social media part, especially during the last year or during this lockdown, when a lot of businesses have been wondering if they're actually going to make it through the next year or not? Yeah, it's an important characteristic. You know, most of the businesses we talk to, um, one of the things they like to do is get an online you know, kind of presence, you know, so, you know, the first piece of that's obviously getting a website up and running, um, being able to actually use, uh, have their customers have, you know, um, access to that. And then that kind of graduates into a, a sort of a member portal, you know, where they can do kind of loyalty points and things like that, check things and, you know, schedule appointments. Um, you know, sort of the next level is you know, sort of doing some marketing. Um, and we do integrate um, with Instagram and Facebook, um, so that you've got um, the ability to book appointments, you know, through, you know, your Facebook stream or your Instagram uh, stream. So that helps tie, you know, things together, generate some more business if they're looking at it that way. Uh, reputation management is another thing that our customers are kind of, you know, looking for, well, how do I do that? And 
Uh, most of them don't know, but they soon learn that if you can get customers writing some type of testimonial about, you know, the service, oh, I, you know, worked with Cindy and she was amazing and you know, my dog doesn't like anybody and she, you know, dog loves Cindy, you mm-hmm. know, that goes a long way because it's, it's viewed as more um, legit, you know, feedback about, you know, the services and you're more li- likely to listen to it. So the, the ability through the software to kind of do that as well to help build, you know, your own brand um, with the social media, you know, platforms, uh, is part of the offer too. So that was really well received. And we introduced that, you know, a couple of years ago and, you know, the adoption of that was way beyond kind of what we thought. Um, so it was, it really does play to what you're saying, uh, around, you know, how much people care about, you know, getting, you know, sort of their digital presence and footprint larger and try to get, you know, broader reach. And it goes to something that's really fundamental in most businesses, which is how do you get more customers? You know, so you get more customers by being active in social media, establishing a brand, get your customers to talk favorably about you, um, handle complaints, um, you know, so that you turn those into favorable complaints downstream. So all, all that's part of, you know, sort of the CRM, which you mentioned earlier, uh, that's not obvious on face value, but that's intrinsically kind of what it, you know, is, you know, being, being able to build kind of your brand locally. Yeah, man, it's some, it's a lot of information. (laughs) (laughs) Lots of information. So um, this is uh, now towards uh, the end of the show um, where um, hopefully a lot of people out there got some good stuff here. um, And we always recommend people to always um, check the descriptions. And so that way they can find uh, your company and stuff. Um, is there, before we end it, is there anything, um, that you want to throw out there, shout out, um, any last things that you would like to say before we start closing? I think we covered a fair amount of ground. I, I really appreciate you guys doing your homework ahead of time and uh, getting mm-hmm. some familiarity about, you know, the company and, you know, the product and the customers we serve. So it was good. You know, it was a really good conversation. It's fun. Awesome. <laughs> you know, I, I really enjoyed the conversation. Like I said, I came from, you know, a background where I kind of understood two of the fields that you guys were in. Um, I highly encourage everyone to check the description below. Make sure you check out DaySmart um, and a bunch of your other websites as well that may pertain to your particular fields that you're in or fields that you've been interested in. Um, I guarantee everybody knows somebody in one of the fields that DaySmart is actually involved in and can help you guys take your businesses to the next level. So I always ask, um, just like you know, Patrick was just saying, testimonials do wonders for business. Make sure that you leave us a comment or a review, whatever platform you're watching or listening to the podcast on. And, you know, um, it'll really help us going to the, the future as well as help other people like yourself find the content that you guys are enjoying. So thank you again, Patrick. Really do appreciate having this conversation. And I hope to have more of these conversations with you because I'm pretty excited to see um, all the stuff that DaySmart is doing and where you guys are going to be going in the future with some of the stuff that we possibly talked about during this podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. It's good to get some good ideas uh, and kick things around. So appreciate you guys' time. We're awesome. Yeah. So it's good. It's fun. Now, the website is uh, daysmart.com. That's where they can find you guys. That's right. And then we have you know product websites for each of our uh, products too. Salon Iris, uh, 123Pet, Orchid, and uh, Inkbook. Awesome. So we'll make sure we list everything um, in the description below for anybody out there that's looking for it. Um, and yeah, we, we again, we appreciate you for coming on the show. Um, and hopefully we get to have more of these conversations. So on behalf of Beyond the Streams, thanks again one more time. And with all that being said, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace out, guys. Thanks.